0.15 properties of other shapes and other shapes is referring to shapes that are not triangles and circles other than triangles and circles however on the SAT if you see shapes that are not triangles and circles and I should probably include um, or sh shapes other than the ones that are given in the chart at the top here anything that's not here will be using properties of these of circles of rectangles of triangles or a 3d shape and here's an example here we have a shape that looks like a um, a trapezoid and it says in quadrilateral so it's a four-sided shape not necessarily a trapezoid in quadrilater quadrilateral a b c d above a d is parallel to b c and when you're solving these geometry questions you should label the 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 image as much as you can so it tells you a d is parallel to b c and CD is half of AB. So this is half of this. And we can represent that by calling the smaller side X and this, the longer side, CD. This is half of this. So we can call this 2X. So that way, this is half of this. This is 2X. This is half of 2X. So that's just X. What is the measure of angle B? And you're looking for this angle here. At first, it could be a little bit tricky because you might not know where to start, but it's actually not that hard. So first, um, here we have a four-sided shape, and on the SAT, you will either have some of the angles of a triangle, and that is 180, or some of the angles of a quadrilateral, that means four-sided shape, and that's 360. In geometry, pro you pro in school geometry, you probably learned that we can continue with this is for three-sided, this is for four-sided, and we could have a four of a five-sided shape, and that would be plus another 180, so this would be 540. However, and six-sided, seven-sided, you learn that in school. But for the SAT, you only need to know the sum of the angles of a triangle or a quadrilateral. So they're either 180 or 360. And that could be helpful because you're looking for this angle here. Uh, and you don't know what this angle here is. You don't know what this angle here is. And you know that this angle is 90. So you just need to know two more angles and then you can find this angle. Maybe that's the approach that we can go for. The other one is maybe we can create a shape and when you have a drawing that's many sided, it usually comes down to triangles, rectangles and circles. So here we have this shape and this looks like part of a triangle. So what if we draw another, if we draw this line, but here, then what's going to happen? So we have, um, here we have a right angle over here also because it's right angle here. So this is a right angle. I'm going to make the angle we're looking for in another color. I'm going to make that blue. We have a right angle here. We have a right angle here. And knowing that these two lines are parallel, think back to the properties that we learn about parallel lines. And that's when you have two parallel lines and you have a line that cuts through the two parallel lines, then the inside angle here. So this angle here and this angle here will form 180 degrees. But because this is 90 degrees, then this must also be 90 degrees. So we know that this is 90. We also know that this is 90 because of the same reason. We, if this angle here is, oh, I should make those red, right? Okay, if this angle here is 90, and here we have a C shape, then this angle here adds up to 180 with this angle. So this is also a right angle. I'm going to move my parallel 
indicators somewhere. I'm going to put it here. Okay, so far so good. And we don't know if this is going to work out yet, but we know that this angle here is 90, this is 90, and so we just need to know this part of the blue and this angle here, and we can find the blue angle here. Now when we draw this line here, we've formed a triangle here, and we know that this side is going to be x because this side is x. And looking back to the formula sheet, we have this side being x, this side being 2x, we have a also a right angle here because if you have a straight angle, then the angles here add up to 180. So if this is 90, then this is also 90. We have a right angle, an x, and a 2x for the hypotenuse. Going back to the properties, maybe you remember that this is a special right triangle. This is x, this is 2x, there's a right angle here then the ratio of the sides will be x to 2x to x square root of 3 and the ratio of the angles will be 60, 30, 60, and 90. So that's very helpful because that gives us the angle that we're looking for, the angle on the bottom left corner. So this angle here then would be 50, uh, it would be 30 here because it's a 30, 60, 90 angle make that uh, let's say another color green so this angle here is 30 and this angle here is 60 and we're done the blue angle here is the sum of this angle 60 and this right angle here which is 90 so 60 plus 90 gets us 150 the answer is 150 and let me give you a couple more um, odd shape questions. Here's one. So we have this oddly looking shape. It says in the figure AC is equal to BC. So it's good to label the graph as we go. So let's do that. We're going to label the graph AC is equal to BC. So that means this side. Oh, That means this side here is the same as this side. And the measure of angle A is 25 degrees. So we're going to put 25 degrees at angle A. Make that bigger. So this is 25. When you're told that these two sides are the same, and you kind of see a triangle here, that is an isosceles triangle because the two sides are identical. So we have two sides that are the same. That means the angles are also the same here and here. The angles opposite the same sides in the triangle are the same. And you learn that as one of the properties of the isosceles triangle, that these two angles here are the same. And there's nothing else that you can label. Um, I guess you can figure out what this angle here is, if it's helpful, but, but it's not. You're Ultimately, you're looking for measure of angle D. You're looking for this angle here at the top. Okay, and so you could, there are many ways to solve this. You could find this angle here because you know, you could solve this one because you know this 25 is 25 and they'll add up to 180. And once you know that angle, you know this angle here because these two angles form a straight line from 180 degrees. And then you can find out about this angle here because this is a right angle, then this angle here must also be a right angle. And here we have a small triangle here, so if this is 25, this is 90, then we can find um, this angle here, and this is a right angle. If we know this angle, then we also know this angle on the inside. Um, let me draw this. We also know uh, this angle here on the inside because these are vertex angles. And so angles that are formed by two straight lines like x's, these two angles are the same. So if we find out this one, we find out this one, then we can find out what the blue is because this here is a triangle and all the angles inside the triangle add up to 180. That's one way to do it. Okay. 
And if you didn't see the insight, the quicker way to do this question, then that's fine too. If you realize that without looking at this angle here, without solving all that, here we have a triangle, B, D, E. And if we know that this angle here is 25, this angle here is 90, then we can actually find out the angle of the measure of angle D pretty quickly because the sum of a triangle adds up to 180. So 90 plus 25 plus some number is going to get us 180. And if you do the math, this angle here is going to equal to 65 degrees. 65, 25, 90. That adds up to 180. So what do we use here? We use several properties about a triangle into this Ali Weir shape for us to find D. We first uh, identify that this is the isosceles triangle. And because we did that, we're able to know that this angle here is 25 because it's a property of the isosceles triangle. Then we realize that this is a triangle and we found out this angle by realizing, by remembering that the angles inside a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So 90 plus 25 plus some number gives us 180. And it's the same if you have circles or other shapes. Remember that it's always going to be testing on some properties of triangles. You, it's usually triangles and circles, but sometimes it's on rectangles. And if you're familiar with all those different properties, then regardless of how weird these shapes look like, it's going to be pretty easy. And by the way, there are some, there's a point that I kind of missed earlier in the circle, so I want to add it to the end of this video. And that is uh, central angle and inscribed angle. And these are important uh, concepts for the SAT also. If I have a circle here and I have a center of the circle, I can find any two points on a circle. Let's say that point and that point. I then draw a line, a radius from that point to the center as well as from the center to the other point. This angle here that I just formed here that's the central angle. And an oh, easy way to remember that is center, central angle sounds like center angle, so it's an angle on the center, on the inside of the triangle, uh, of the circle. Inscribe angle is taking these two points and then drawing a line to the other side of the circle, like so. Okay. And inscribed angle, this angle here, will always be half of this angle, half of central angle. And it doesn't matter where I draw this. I can draw it here, I can draw it here, I can draw it here, and there will all be inscribed angles of this angle, central angle, and they'll all be half the value of this angle here. So on the SAT, you may be given a question where it tells you the value of this angle here is say, um, what does that look like? 80 degrees. 80, okay, that's 80. And it asks you what is the value of this angle here and the answer is 40 because it's the inscribed angle so this is half the value of that. So 80 and that's 40. All right, that is it for this point. Go ahead and do the classwork and homework Ask teacher if you have any questions and I'll see you in math point 16.